All right, here we are. We're talking about systems. We're in chapter three of Algebra 2, and we're going to jump into systems. Uh, this this is kind of, I, I would say, I mean, we, we had some tricky stuff with piecewise functions and, and the like in our, our last lesson. We got some early tastes of some graphing nonsense and all of that. But this, I feel like this is kind of where the rubber meets the road as far as taking from Algebra 1, <coughs> excuse me, up to Algebra 2. There's going to be a lot of stuff that's review. In fact, in this lesson, we're going to take a, a single lesson to review some topics that in Algebra 1 probably were like three, maybe even four lessons worth of content from Algebra 1, but we're going to review it here in one lesson. And and so we're, we're going to talk about some kind of method. Well, we'll do some little definitional stuff at first, and then we're going to talk about a couple of different methods of, of uh, solving systems that you've probably seen before. Uh, hopefully you have, and hopefully this is review. Um, this is uh, a rather large topic, and we end up doing doing stuff with this. Um, you, we do sometimes do some problems with this, even in geometry. So probably this is review, but we'll see what happens. So we're gonna do this first sort of example that is solving a system by graphing. Now I want, I like to stress really, really heavily that the only time only time that you will that we we really want to be solving a system with graphing is right here in this this lesson right now and and the the reason for that is is this is the most imprecise and useless method now what so why are we learning it well the reason why we're learning it is to remind ourselves hopefully again it's review is to remind ourselves what the solution to a system is and what it means. So what we have here, and you know, so what is a system? First of all, let's kind of go way, way high level. We'll jump way up the way up the tree. A system is a group, a group of more than one equation. Now, in this case, in this case, this is a two by two system. There are two variables in this system. And there are two equations, which is really good because if there are two if there are two variables, you need <coughs> at least two equations to solve the thing. If we had two variables, like if we had six x plus two a equals b, and I said solve, and that was the only instructions I gave you, be like, huh, what? I can't do that because you if you have two different er <laughs> or our six turns into a B, then we really are up a creek because now we've got three. I don't know. But the point is, in order to solve for two variables, you have to have two equations, right? And we'll see later in this unit, if you have three variables, we have to have at least three equations. And that's, and that's how that goes as far as what we can solve for. So we've got two equations here. Now, what kinds of equations are these? Well, they're linear, right? We're going to be dealing only with linear equations in this chapter. Uh, we Later, especially in like pre-cal, you may do systems where you throw in some quadratics and some other things like that. But for now, they're all going to be linear. So they're all going to be straight lines. So we're going to solve by graphing. What does that mean? Well, we're going to graph each one of these things. So let's start by graphing this guy. So how do we, how are we going to go and graph this? We're going back to the last chapter. We need to get this in slope intercept form. So we need to start by solving for y. So we're going to subtract that 2x from both sides, minus 2x, minus 2x. And then we end up with negative y equals negative 2x minus 1. That's from this first equation, right? So now we're not, why isn't quite by itself? That's an easy mistake to make that I see people even up to like pre-cal making this mistake because it's got a negative on it. So how are we going to get rid of that? Well, to get rid of that, we're going to divide both sides by negative one. Easy peasy. So our first equation is y equals positive 2x plus one. We'll graph that guy here in a minute. Let's do the other one. So this one, again, we want to get y by itself. So how are we going to do that? Well, we've got this 5x that we've got to subtract off, right? Minus 5x, minus 5x. So then we're left with 2y equals negative 5x minus 16. Now we've got this 2 on here. We've got to divide everything by 2. I'm going to write that on each one of these just to kind of remember what's going on, right? We're not... 
We're not divided. You can write it like this where it's divided over everything. It's just when it's not a one, it, I just feel like it's more clear this way. So you can write it either way. Either way works. So then we get y equals negative 5 halves x minus 8 because negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8. All right. So now we've got these two equations. <coughs> and I hope I hope that the intersection to these is going to show up on the page. I think it's going to. Let's see what happens. So we're gonna gonna graph these guys. Let's start with this this one that we're gonna do in pink. So we're gonna go up to positive one, and we're going to go up two over one, up two over one, two over one. I'm gonna kind of put I'm gonna put a bunch of dots because it's easier for me since I don't have a um, straight edge. I'm just relying on the tools in Photoshop to kind of do the best I can crossing the dots, something like that, right? So there's that pink one. Now this guy, we're gonna start down at negative eight, which is right here, I think, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <gasps> Who do we appreciate? So we're gonna go down five, oh, we can't go down five. So remember, this is a trick that we use if we ha are gonna have to go off the page in, we, we flip both things. So instead of going down five over two, we're going to go up five and back two. So see why we flipped both? So instead of down and then over, we're going to go, I should do it where it's going to show up right on your screen, down and over, we're going to go up and back, right? And so that's how that's going to go. So we're going to go up five, up one, two, three, four, five, over one, two, you you may already if you if you're remembering some of this from algebra one you may have already kind of seen what's happening here up one two three four five back one two and that's enough to be getting on with like that uh, something like that oh clearly not how about that that look right look reasonable Okay, so there they are. There's the pink one and the yellow. Now, so the reason why we're doing this at all is to understand what the solution to a system means. And that is where the two lines cross. So this right here is the solution. And that's true. And this is still the solution. And it's that's and we need to understand that con conceptually that that's what the solution means. Even we, we go to better or ways to solve them like substitution, elimination, Kramer's rule, all of those things. Even then, this is the solution and that's what it means. So the solution is an ordered pair. So you're going to get a, a answer for X and an answer for Y. So in this case, it's negative one, two for the X and the Y part would be negative one, two, three, negative three. So that is the solution. So the solution is an ordered pair. When we get to um, three by three systems, we're talking about an ordered triple. Whoa. Okay, let's let's kind of get types of solutions. Cause so we can have different types of solutions when we're talking about systems. So we can have <laughs> we can have systems that are both consistent and independent. So something like this. This would be something that is consistent and independent. And they have one solution because it crosses in one place. So if a so if it's kind of a normal system where they cross and they cross in just one place, that system then is consistent and independent. So what about consistent and dependent? So let's do an example of that. I'm gonna do a little bit of shenanigans with the, with the thing. So it's something like this. What am I doing? How about this button? Now that button right there. So it's something like this. What are those, what are those two lines? Well, those two lines are parallel and that means that when do when do parallel lines touch? Never, right? So if these are parallel, oh, kinda, what's happening? There we go. That was weird. So these two lines are parallel, right? And so since they're parallel, they never touch. So how many solutions does that system have? It has no solutions.
Okay. Now the inconsistent system is harder to draw. Okay. So the inconsistent system is really, really difficult to, to draw. It's just, so we're, I'm going to make sure your ears are on and make sure you, and you write down the notes and all the things and understand what it is. So if a system is inconsistent, you may have already figured out how many solutions it's going to have. We got one solution, no solution. And, you know, if we're talking about equations, what's the logical next step? Infinite solutions. Well, that's true. So when would a system have infinite solutions? Well, it would be if it's the same thing. So this one and then the same thing over it. So if we have one line and then the same line graph right on top of each other, then it is in. Oh, I just realized that I wrote these backwards. <laughs> That's annoying, isn't it? How about <laughs> how about consistent and dependent would be infinite solutions? That makes way more sense. We're uh, that makes our colors all messed up. Let me pause and fix it and come right. Back. And we did it. Sorry, if you're if you're taking your math notes in pen, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> let's let's pull out those pencils. And uh, now I, I'm kind of the pot calling the kettle black. I used to take my math notes in college in pen too. So, but you know, I I every once in a while regretted my life choices as well. So you know, e either way, however we roll with things, there we go. So consistent and dependent is infinite solutions and it yeah my, my order of draw I, yeah it is infinite solutions and it is the same line graphed right on one right on top of each other inconsistent makes sense is no solution and they are parallel lines parallel lines not limes <laughs> but lines there we go. Okay, now let's remind us of the two methods that hopefully you already know how to do because hopefully you've learned how to solve systems using algebraic methods already. So the first method that we're going to remember is to how to do it with substitution. So substitution, you're going to be substituting one thing in for the other. So step one of substitution is to take one of our two equations and to solve it for one of the variables. Very often, if we're gonna, if a system is set up easily for substitution, it's gonna be really easy to do. So if you take a look at this one right here, this first equation, that guy's gonna be really easy to solve for x. Let me show you what I mean. So we've got x minus seven y equals 11. So to solve that for x, all we have to do is add 7y plus 7y. Whoop, what am I writing? Plus 7y. Those don't combine. They're not like terms. So x equals 11 plus 7y. Now you could write that as 7y plus 11. That would also be correct. So now after you do step one of solving one of your equations for one of the variables, you're going to take and substitute, well, this for that variable in the other equation. So in this case, we're going to take and take 11y, which equals x, and we're going to substitute that in for the x over there. So just like any other time we've done substitution, even if it's just a number, our first step with that is going to be to rewrite this guy with parentheses where the variables is. So five parentheses. Now you notice I'm gonna be making a bigger space because I'm gonna shove this whole thing in there, right? And then bring down the rest. So plus four y equals negative 23. Now I said at the beginning of this that in order to solve an equation, in order to solve a equation for a variable, you have to have as many equations as you have variables. Well, look what we have now in this guy right here. We have only one variable, one variable, one equation. We can solve this. So what is step one down here? Well, step one down here is to distribute that, right? So we're gonna distribute the five. Five times 11 is 55. Five times seven Y would be 35 Y plus 4y equals negative 23. Now we've got like terms. Let's combine those like terms. 
And hey, we're in Algebra 2, so let's go ahead and subtract off the 55 as well. Let's take care of both of those things. As long, See, when we write it real neat like this, especially if you're changing colors, for the intermediate steps. This is pencil. This is whatever you're using for your intermediate steps. Then it's real easy. It's real easy, and it's you can see what you've done, right? So we can, we can sometimes combine those steps when we're doing those kinds of things. So 35y plus 4y is 30. 9y equals negative 23 minus 55. The signs are the same, so that would be negative 78. Now this 39 is attached to the y, so we're going to divide him off. Divide by 39. Now, if I'm not greatly mistaken, this is going to be a negative 2. But let's sanity check ourselves. We know it's going to be negative. And let's pull up that calculator just, just to double check and sanity what we're doing. All right, so we're going to do 78 divided by 39 equals 2. Yeah, see, we're right. So, and you notice that I didn't put negative 78 in here. That's that's a habit that I have to that way. And it helps keep my brain involved and engaged uh, because the calculator can only do what you tell it to do. And so I like to, to let my brain handle the uh, sign rules and to do those bits. And then the, the calculator handles the, the um, calculations themselves, the, the numerical bits. And it, that's just one thing that I do to, it means less button pushing and less weight. Cause that's a place where you can add error. And it also keeps my brain involved and engaged. So now we're not done. I know that's the one bad thing about systems is, is we got so many layers, so many steps or so many different puzzle pieces that were involved because we've got the Y part of that point, that ordered pair, but we need to find the X point. So the next thing to do is to substitute that in. Now we could put that in either one of these equations. Now, one thing that's really nice is I'm going to go ahead and plug it into this one that's already solved for X because that's going to be super duper simple. So I'm going to substitute in over here. So I'm going to write down my deal with my equation with variable, excuse me, with parentheses where the variables are. All right. So I'm going to put a negative two right there. Now that's easy peasy. All right, so x equals 11. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. Signs are different, so we're going to subtract and keep the sign of the bigger one. So x equals negative 3. So the last step is to write our answer as an ordered pair. And then we are through with that example. So negative 3, negative 2 is the answer to that one. Let's do one more. coat. So that was using... That was solving systems using substitution. We get hopefully dust off some of those cobwebs. Let's take a look at elimination. So elimination, <coughs> excuse me. There's kind of two ways to teach elimination. That's the addition method and the subtraction method. And the only reason I mention this, it, I teach the addition method and the addition method only. Um, and so. The only reason I, I mention that is if if by some miracle you're you're a student who remembers elimination from algebra one well enough that you might get confused at this one point, um, just take a step back and take a look at it, and I think you'll understand the difference between the dish what I'm teaching versus what you learn. There's only a tiny tweak, um, and it won't most of you won't remember enough that it's going to matter. So elimination also is a step by step procedure as well. Step one here is to get at either the either one of the two variables, one of the two that you, we want them to be the opposite, right? So we want, and so what are opposites, right? What's the opposite of five? Well, that's negative five. That's the opposite of that. What's the opposite of negative 32? It's positive 32. So we want them to be the same thing, but opposite signs. So that is our first goal. So let's take a look here and find what's going to be the easiest way to do that. So if we picked the Z's to eliminate, then we'd have to do something like multiplying. We could turn them into positive and negative 24 maybe, right? Because 8 times 3 is 24 and 6 times 4 is 24. So we could multiply both of them. So that could work. We could do something like that. But if we take a look at the W's over here, 
there's an easier way to go on this particular problem because W's, we can turn a three into a six because three times two is six, right? And so then they would be opposite. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna multiply this entire equation by two. Okay, so if we multiply this entire equation by two, we end up with six W plus 12z because 6z times 2 is <coughs> excuse me is 12 and then 36 times 2 is 72 and then I'm going to rewrite this first equation underneath here so this is just this top one rewritten so you see what I'm what I'm reminding hopefully reminding you of and that is that we took and we made the W's opposites. So we multiplied something on this second one to make them opposites. Like I said, we could have used the Z's and we could have multiplied both of them, both equations by something. And sometimes you'll have to do that, but try to find the easiest option. So now they're opposites. Now here's the, where the addition method of the, or addition, yeah, the addition method comes in. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to add each one of these pieces up. So what's gonna to happen to these W's? 6W plus negative 6W, it cancels. So that that whole variable is gonna go away, which is our goal. So 12Z minus 8Z is 4Z. So we've got 4Z equals 72 minus 44, how about we pull out the calculator on that one? We could think through it. We do six plus two is eight and it's 50. So 28 is what my brain's telling me. So let's see what happens. 72 minus 44 equals 28 matches what we're thinking in our brain. So that looks good. 28. Now we're going to divide both sides by four. I right, let me, yeah, let me take a pause before we rush off. So now we've eliminated one of the variables. We've got this nice, clean, simple little baby equation that's easy to solve. We got four times times Z equals 28. That's easy to solve. We just divide by four, right? A lot of times elimination is a nice method. Uh, there are definitely some times when substitution is the easier way to go. But if, if the equation looks scary with just these two methods, elimination is great. 28 divided by 4 is, of course, 7. So now, the last bit, we've got one of the, one of the variables. We've got z equals 7, right? So the last bit is we've got to take and substitute that in for the z in one of these two equations. So you can pick any of these equations. You can pick this one, this one, or the one where we multiplied, which is almost never the right choice because the numbers are getting bigger. We want smaller numbers. So you just kind of look and say, where would it be easiest to put? Would it be easiest to put it here or there? This one's all positive. So I'm going to go with the second one. If you want to put it in the first one, that's, that's totally fine. You'll get the same answer either way. So I'm going to do this equation with this substituted in there. So you notice in elimination, we still use a little bit of substitution at the end plus six times and then we're going to put a seven in there equals 36. so <coughs> six times seven is 42. So we can bring down plus three w equals 36. Then we're going to subtract off that 42, of course, minus 42, minus 42. Signs are different. We subtract and keep the sign of the bigger one. Bring down the 3w equals negative 6. Is that right? Uh, six plus six, six, six. Yeah, 6. Okay. Then we're going to divide off the 3. So w equals negative two and that's it so in the next lesson we're going to you we're going to take this and we're going to add some shading because we're going to take a look at inequalities i look forward to seeing you there if you're one of my students do your homework i'll see you in class if you're not one of my students hopefully this was helpful for you thanks for joining us let us know in the comments how else we can help you with math science or homeschooling adios bye bye see you later